slow down a bit. You know, it was funny because on Constantine, whenever I uh, did that scene, and that was really cool. That was my first speaking thing on a TV. I remember you calling me, man. I thought that was awesome. I called you for everything. I called you you for everything. It was it was really sweet though, man, because you because I remember like how excited you were, and you were just like, uh, yeah. Uh. I thought that was so cool. I enjoyed. <laughs> I enjoyed. And you were like, "Look, man, I'm sorry if I'm bothering you or whatever." And I was like, "No, dude, this is this is fun. This is why." Like, was. I was like, "Keep it coming, dude. Keep call me about anything you want." <laughs> that was I, that one, was cool, man. That was the one project where I was really floating on that cloud, you know. You and you know that cloud. Um, I mean, you get there and and they, you tell them who you are, and then suddenly they put you on this levitating device basically and it just floats you everywhere and um that's really how i felt you know you go up you see your name on the on the honey wagon door for, for the first time ever and you're like is that me is that is that me and you know i mean you want to act like you've been there for sure but um that was one of the most fun moments for me was that shoot and when we were shooting the scene it was in a pub or whatever and there's all these miners around and they're listening to the foreman talk. And, you know, you've got maybe 25 extras in there with you. So, you know, I had lines. Uh, background and, artist, Jeff. Sorry, sorry. Is that what it is now? <laughs> My bad. <Jeff. laughs> background artist. Gosh, forgive me. Um, so, so then anyway, it was a situation where I'm just trying to do my lines and think about it and they want to start talking to you, you know, and, and, uh, you hear there's one guy and he was like, he goes, man, where are you from? So I'm from Knoxville. And he goes, you know, Jason Benjamin. <laughs> I said, yeah, I know Jason. He goes, yeah, I know Jason. And then this guy just pr- proceeded to just like bash the production, not really like bash it, but he just kept saying stuff and in my head, I'm thinking, dude, you, that is not really what you want to do right now if you're trying to make it further. That's dude, not the attention that, you want to get. I have seen that so much from people, and, and I've never understood it. You know, like, mm-hmm. basically, I've seen people, like, begging for the job and then complaining about their lines and stuff in it. Yeah. And, or, or, like, their part in it, and I'm like... Man, I don't need to be here anyway. And I'm like, you really it's think like, that's or, how they're going to get attention? Or it's, but it's also that like, um, almost that self-deprecating uh, mm-hmm. dialogue that they continue to throw out as they sit back on the floor or something that they've been shot. You mm-hmm. know, it's like, oh, I'm used to it. I do this in every movie. You know, yeah. and you're like, <laughs> oh, guy, come on now. <laughs> you know, know, and I, it, that always bums me out because I'm like. Uh, well, and I think, I think sometimes that's where people can get the actors can get that moniker of being an a hole. You know, it's like, oh yeah, I mean, he's such a hole, man. And I've done that to people, but you also get in a situation where if you are concentrating on your lines and you're trying to get the scene right, and people are trying to, you know, distract you a little bit, you're just like, man, can you just hang on a second? I gotta, I just gotta focus for a minute. See, I ain't um, even talking about that yet. I'm talking about just the simple, like, the way it appears to everybody around and on set is that it's, like, yeah. ungrateful or something. It is. You know? Yep. And, and, and the thing is, is I, I've met some of these people, and they're, they're really nice folks. Mm-hmm. But it's like, man, you, you know, it, it's, like, it's like they're trying to get attention and saying something right. out loud in the hopes that that'll change <laughs> right then. That yeah. somebody will come yeah. over and be like, you know what? We're not going to kill you in this episode or this movie. Right. You know what? We're going to give you, you know, you just changed my mind. It's like, that's what they're hoping for and doing all that. And Absolutely. It's, and it's a bummer because it's so obvious yeah. as opposed to just coming in and knowing, like, I guess, knowing the place that they're at, knowing yeah. their place and mm-hmm. just crushing it. And, and that, that always makes me feel weird when I see that. I've seen that on a bunch, you know, Absolutely. like. Well, that day I was there, I had to be on set at like 730 in the morning, but then they didn't get to me till five o'clock in the afternoon or five o'clock in the evening to shoot. Cha-ching. So I know. So I was just in my, the trailer all day hanging out and 
I would get text from the the AD, and he's like, "We're not going to get to you right away, man. If you just want to hang out and go eat lunch, you can do that." And then uh, so I said, "Okay." And then he was like, uh, "Man, if you just want to keep hanging out, we'll get to you." So I just walked down to where they were shooting because I hadn't seen the set all day or anything. I hadn't been down there. So I walked down and I saw the extra, sorry, background artists um, <laughs> on the side of the building nice. hanging out, you know, to, and I just went over and started talking to them because that's more like where I feel like I fit in anyway. It's like I'm not on the varsity team yet, still on the JV or whatever, you know, and I'm going to go hang out over here and talk to these guys and, I didn't tell him who I was. So when it came back later and we did the scene, they were all like, Hey, and so hopefully that showed that I, that not everybody had to be mean, but yeah, there was another, if they were doing my close up shot on that. And I swear at the end of my shot, the ex background artist started to, um, like closing it around me and get in front of the camera between me. Oh, and the he's camera. trying to get, he's trying to get your screen time, man. Oh yeah. And I was like, dude, what, what are you doing? I said, I've worked for 25 years to get to this point, And that's my camera right now. That's my camera. It's on <laughs> me sucker. I was like, gosh, but they didn't like, they crowded you and crush you just to be seen on their shoulder. And I don't know. I've just been sort of, uh, nonchalant or melancholy today anyway. Oh, uh, you bummed out a little bit? I am. I'm sorry, buddy. I don't know why. Well, it happens. I don't know why, but just trying to I'll get tell you exactly out. why. Because it'll go from 70 degrees and then it'll snow the next day and then go back to 70 degrees two days later and your brain can't figure out whether it's springtime, winter, or summer. That's why, It's Jeff. true. It's true. <laughs> the inconsistency to me, uh, I mean, and this is just Tennessee weather. All right. I got it. I get it. But I'm like, uh, I don't like being jerked around, you know? Yeah. Let's stick to it. If we're going to be 70 degrees, let's keep it at 70. Yeah. That's a, and, and I, I think that's part of when I get real bummed out as a, I, I go outside and I'm cold and I'm like, good grief. Give me 80. Give me. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? What were we talking about? Sweatpants, though. Why were we talking about sweatpants? Just because anytime, you know, being no, comfortable. I forgot what. Oh, because you were talking about your. Yeah, oh, style. We were talking about bangles so, and, and accessories, and then it went into your camo pants. That's right. That you so, wear, yeah. whether you're changing the oil or whatever. Right. Sarah Marshall was about style and, and sweatpants and all that. That's right. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, I don't have any style right now. And, uh, you know, I, I would Johnny Depp it up, Jack Sparrow it up all day if I could. But then I asked myself, where do I have to go anymore? Um, t- you know, dressing like that. The cool thing is that my kids, they're, they're in that stage now where they're looking into style and everything. And my oldest son, he's all about, I need to go buy some rings and stuff. And, uh, that's that's pretty cool. He he's a he's a stylish kid. I was sitting there just thinking, do you want to be Jeffrey Depp or Jeff Delaney? <laughs> no, come on. I think that's been a I I that's something I thought about this past week is like I'm sure we've talked about this once before in our lives, but like the idea I had of who I wanted to be and who I wanted my personality to be. Right. As opposed to embracing who I actually am. Mm-hmm. I feel like in the past two or three years, I've really embraced who Lens Edwards is as opposed to who Lens Edwards thinks he wants to be. Right. And that's wild. Yeah. That is wild. It goes back to my mom always saying like, oh, you fly by the seat of your pants and you're so spontaneous. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, yeah. I, I believe that because she said it. And then when I realized like in my own adult life, I was like, I'm not that way. I actually hate most like spontaneous moments right you know in a script or in a movie and any of that is fun is you know if the moment comes about you take it but like in life i've realized i like a plan i like um you know 
I, and and it was so funny to really figure that out about myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and that was just the beginning, you know. Like, well, I was telling my friend Whitney, um, you know, she, she was talking about how cool it was that you know we were doing our live stuff, and and I said, uh, um, I said I. I haven't had a lot going on creatively in the last little bit. And I, I said, I want to be the rock star. You, you think I am. <laughs> oh man. So, you know, so I am, I'm a rock star. Well, and that's, and I think I've led majority of my twenties that way. And it was wrong, you know, in my own, yeah. like looking back at it all. Like I was like, it was all phony at the end of the day. It it's is. like, I was trying to be something I'm not. And I yeah. fought against it. Even my, like, it, it, and I think it's funny because I thought about that this week where I was just like, man, I wasted so much time, I, you know, trying to be something I'm not. No, I understand. And, and, and I think it's so funny, too. People are always like, live without regrets. And I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> I got so well, many regrets. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, I used to, you know, I used to imagine – that all my neighbors knew I was the guy on TV. Um, and maybe they did for a second. And part of me, part of that stupid ego, you know, really cultivates that mentality. You don't want to say you're better than everybody else, but really that's what you're doing. You're, you're putting on yourself. I'm better than these people who are my fans. And, you know, I have really been brought down from that, which I'm, I'm thankful for because now my, my neighbors don't know who I am, except weird guy they don't say hi to. <laughs> yeah, the grown the grown ass twelve year old across the street. <laughs> exactly. You know, the new we have a bunch of new neighbors that houses have sold and people have moved in. I'm like, hey, how are you? And they're just like, fine. And then go back in the house. And I'm like, okay. Oh, uh, it's because they're from they're from California or New York. <laughs> they, they are from California. They are from California. Go back. <laughs> I have yeah, such got a nice neighbors though. I have such a uh a bitterness towards that whole thing that's happening in our housing market. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got good neighbors that have moved in actually. So oh, that's like, cool. The ones from California, they're really cool. They left San I'll Diego. Say, I will say all my neighbors are awesome. I like all my neighbors. Um Well, my neighbors left San Diego because they told me that they don't they said we had to move because they don't welcome our kind there anymore. And I was like, but I mean, I read kind? between the line. Um, gosh, you can't really say what you want to say because you might get demonetized or banned. So you can't say, <laughs> I you can't say certain words, right? There's certain keywords that we can't say, even if it's the truth. Um, well, we're opening up a whole new can here, Jeff. Yeah, they didn't want to do the hokey pokey, and San Diego gotcha. wanted them to. So, how about that? There you go. They turned themselves around and bought a house across from me. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> so anyway, so anyway, that's cool. Did you watch? Did you watch that Jimmy Savile? No, not yet. Every time I watch the trailer, I'm like, I don't know if I can handle this right now. I've been it's, living, living too much <laughs> in the throes of, of similar. I got you. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. And, and I've watched so much of that stuff lately. I'm like, man, I just want to watch uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Exactly. And I'm going to watch that now. And like all these, we, this is the movie episode. We've this mentioned is the movie so episode. many movies, man. And people are yeah. going to have to go watch all these movies now. Man, I've watched all sorts of stuff. Severance is so good on Apple. Oh, that show is yeah. so good. You'd love that show. I need to watch, you would that. watch lo- that. You would love that show. Okay. Um, what else did I watch recently that I was like, oh, man, I watched that Metal Lords on Netflix. I liked it. I have seen that. It's cool. Um, I've watched so much lately. Just uh-huh. like I started Coda. And I stopped it because I was like, I got to save this one for Ashley because this is already like it was like 15 minutes in. And I was like, this is so good. I okay. get it. Yeah, uh, I do that all the time. And, and Coda, Coda won, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, And I was like, yeah, it's I'm 15 minutes in and I'm already like, OK, this is yeah. awesome. Um, 
Well, that Jimmy, that Jimmy Seville thing, man, it, it's um, it's amazing to me because he was just a DJ in in you know Europe, and um, he just, I mean, he's just a DJ, and you're just a guy who plays the records <laughs> for for the radio for people to listen to. And I've always had this weird, not always, but I guess later on now. I look at certain things and I say, I don't think that should be famous. I don't think you should become famous for that. Like, like newscasters. Um, I don't think those people should become famous. We shouldn't put them on the pedestal that we do. Um, simply because you're on TV should not make you a brand. Um, you know, I look at the Matt Lowers of the world and the Katie Couric's and all this. And I'm like, what you, ha, it's like, a, it's like Cisco and Ebert. Siskel and Ebert became famous as a brand, mm -hmm. but really they were just criticizing the movies that other people made. So right. you become famous and it goes back to what we talked about, about Twitter and stuff. Uh, oh, which by the way, when we were having our last conversation, uh -oh. Elon Musk bought Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. As we were talking, man, I knew that. And speaking of, I watched the uh, return to space documentary movie it. last night and it was awesome anyway, i haven't seen it i haven't seen but it but i yeah i heard that he was uh he's not gonna sit on the board though really yeah i heard that he was or, or i could be wrong about that well he, he made it. a he made a tweet that i saw and he said uh next board meeting is going to be lit and it showed a picture of him he had posted a picture of him on joe rogan smoking the joint oh, smoking a doobie <laughs> yeah <laughs> and he said next board meeting is going to be lit that's awesome but um, that's pretty good. I mean, he's he's the largest shareholder. That's that's good. I think it's really weird because I I left Twitter as I had mentioned because it's just so hate filled and everything. I left it, um, and that was like two or three months before they really started to do all the crap that they do um, to people. And then I came back to do my NFT stuff. I I re-signed up just to kind of promote my NFTs, and um, like two weeks after that. Elon Musk buys it, and there's a chance that that may turn around. The whole thing may turn around, um, which I think would be great. But right, um, yeah. So yeah, that so, was. So you don't think people should be famous for oh, being yeah. DJs? I don't. I don't. I don't think. <sighs> I guess well, it's you inevitable. Gotta, it's inevitable now with social media. Like that's. Oh yeah, I mean, that, like I that's said, that's kind of that's kind of the thing now. Is that like, what's your brand? What are you selling? Everybody's an entrepreneur. Da 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 da. Well, what is, you, you know, what is fame anymore? You got to. It's all about you know, infamy is the new fame. And jeez, infamy is tough though because you're remembered for something bad. Look at Logan Paul. I mean, look at that guy. He's well, his, now famous, but he's, I mean. You know what I'm saying? He's a fighter now. Yeah. Him and his brother both are just like boxers. They make he tons fought at of WrestleMania. Money. He won at WrestleMania. So, but, um, so, so you look at that and I just say, I don't know that. Don't, don't, be, don't like, like with wrestling, we're talking about wrestling and there's these guys that, that are these dirt sheet guys supposedly and they know all the in and outs of what's going on in wrestling and it's really just like they're statisticians right mm -hmm. like you've got people who who are in sports and they're statisticians they're just like the nerdiest of nerd which there's nothing wrong with that but they keep track of all the numbers they can tell you all the numbers of this game and those people have jobs too um doing exactly that well then you've got people who who are self-made on the backs of famous people so if, if, you know, uh, somebody goes out and wrestles and they have a match and they're, they're becoming fa they're becoming really popular and they're famous, this guy's going to go and write an article to tear down that person or whatever. And, um, they become somehow famous for doing this. And I don't know that we should be making people like that famous um so well it's, anyway it's what the people I, want jeff i i guess and that's I guess. you know well, then in, it a comes weird, back. in a weird way 
it's like a true form of uh, supply and demand in a sense. And it, maybe the problem is, is people wanting the demand for the supply that's out, you right. know, and that, well, like, that goes beyond people branding themselves in social media. That's something else. Right. That's, that's just humanity. Well, again, you get and back to the, to the DJ thing and it's like, Oh, I want to meet you. I want to meet you. I want to meet. Why do you, this is the dude that pushes the button <laughs> that plays the music, not the guy mm-hmm. who made the music. Not the guy that right. had any part of the music. Not the guy who did or got gal, whatever. I, when I say guy, I mean everybody. Um, you, the you, why you want to? Why are we doing that? Why do we want to go see somebody who's just like us on the surface? Well, it's an avalanche, uh, man. It's all about momentum. That's what yeah. everything is. All of a sudden, people notice something's working, and they're like, "Hey, I'm gonna keep going." Then people get attracted to it, and they start telling their friends, "Like, oh, you got to watch this guy. He's hysterical, or whatever it is." I know. And, and and it builds and it's like, OK, yeah, like, you know, well, and that's and what come. That's what leads back to the Jimmy Seville. It's not Seville. It's Savile. Jimmy Savile. Um, that's what leads back to him. This dude was a DJ and he started acting outlandishly. So he started, you know, bleached blonde, long bleach blonde hair like Ric Flair and and, you know, wore really bright uh running suits and boas and things like this. And he gets to come out and introduce the, I mean, there's footage of him introducing the Rolling Stones on stage and this is how he started. So people made him famous for, for pushing buttons on famous people. Yeah. Um, And then that whole thing just unfolds, man. And it's like, he was, driving around the royal family from parties they leave parties together and he had the royals with him and and it just am- amazed me that and we only we've only watched actually we've only watched part one so far we haven't watched part two um but the first part is like an hour and a half long and it it just tells you the whole background it doesn't tell you what he did until right. episode two but um like everything was just like good grief man i heard that and I watched great. the the Hillsong one. Oh, you did? I haven't watched. Oh man! Oh man! It is. <sighs> this is loaded for me because it's <laughs> it's like every reason I don't like the church. In a sense of the uh, human or or, or <sighs> modern well, is- sense of the word. Um. Because it reminds me of the church I grew up in. Mm-hmm. Uh, one and two, it's like, it, and this is the other thing is like, you know, other people I know that that like, I guess went to that church online or whatever and watched it, and they were all like, oh, da, 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 da. and then you realize like, oh, I don't want to blow it because people need to watch this. It's insane. Sure. And I- and and it and then and then it just swings all the way back around and like. These are all people, people I know that are like, God's calling me to this and all this, that, yeah. and other. And then it, it all just makes it seem like a joke. <laughs> like it's all just a big joke when you watch the Hillsong thing because you're like, oh. Yeah. You know. And Hill, um, Hillsong, Hillsong was always a joke. And I'll I'll inject this. I felt, th- I felt, dude, I felt that way. I, like I never bought into it. Like I was just yeah. kind of like, eh. And, who I, did I, and for me with churches that have like <laughs> live concerts, I'm immediately like, nah, I'm good. Well, and here's the thing, and I'll inject. You said that's what bothers you about the church. We have to remember that places like Hillsong are not the church. Oh, right. But that is a that's a it's a uh, it's another we... gospel, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. It it's the Republican that... Jesus, not the classic Jesus. <laughs> well, it, yeah, I mean, but there's it really isn't because if they're teaching false things, then they're not teaching what the church really believes, the actual church. And that's one of those words that has been really convoluted and thrown around and twisted to mean what it's not supposed to mean. I was having a conversation with my wife the other day. It's like, oh, they're building a new church over there. And I say, that's not that's not the church. That's a building where people go to mingle and meet. But that's not the church. 
And I don't even, and we had a conversation of, I don't know that we should be building buildings like that, especially these multi-million dollar buildings because it becomes a pharmaceutical country club. Uh, oh yeah. But you, we were supposed to, followers are supposed to meet in houses. You're supposed to meet together and eat together and that sort of thing. It's, you know, again, we go back to, you started this by the way. Now, <laughs> we go back to um, like people put a lot of importance on buildings and, and that's a really an Old Testament thing is like the temple and the synagogues and things like this. People put a lot of emphasis on property. And it's why Jesus said, um, I will rebuild this temple in three days. And what he meant was when he was resurrected in his body. And then when it says that our body is the temple um, of the Holy Spirit, the, it's, it's people who follow are the temple, are the building. You're not supposed to build a building because then you've got all this politics that come in the way. You've got, uh, you know, who's going to throw the, the, the Easter cotillion and you've got arguments, you've got boards. It was never supposed to be like that. It was never uh, watch, to watch the Hillsong uh, uh, documentary, man. I will. I will. I need to. It, it, it's, it's just, it's something. Yeah. It's something. Well, and the thing hey. is, it's like, go ahead. Well, and the and what you you know what what you end up seeing at the end is like the foundation in which that church was built on in mm-hmm. Australia. It could be a whole nother documentary on its own. Yeah, you know, it's like well, good grief. And I've known about it for a long time, and I I had issues with it when it first became all the hubbub. But if you look back through history, you've got this whole. Um, there was a movie co- made called the American gospel. And it's basically, it's not the gospel. It's a gospel based on, um, collectivism, nationalism, that God wants you to have a bunch of money. And that the only way to get that money is for you to have faith, send in your money to these people who have millions and millions and millions of dollars already. And thinking that God is some sort of, uh, wizard genie (laughs) genie. Yeah. And that's totally missing the point that people, Jesus isn't enough for people. They have to have the quote, quote, or hashtag blessing, right? The, the blessing is the fact that you can know God. The, the blessing is the fact that you're redeemed from your sins. The, the, the blessing is Jesus coming and doing everything that he did. That's the blessing. He, you know, he goes down a list of, of who's blessed. If you do this, well, those uh, blessed is he who blessed is blessed is blessed is it's not about getting all these things. I think people think that God is there to give them all these, all this stuff and people who are just as greedy capitalize on that. And they create places like Hillsong. They create places like elevation. They create places like, you know, uh, Robert Tilton, who was in Texas, Jim Baker. I mean, and those guys become, the voice of quote, quote, Christianity for America. And people go, well, you know, I guess they're our voice for God. And there's nothing you can do except in your own little space in time and day, just go, no, that's actually not what that's supposed to be, or that's not what that means. Um, so yeah, but yeah, Hillsong, man, I just had a, having research stuff as I have over the years, you kind of see it a mile away. You, oh, you can, sure. You can see it coming, and you're like, you know, for me, well, it'd be like, and I think I think the the thing is, is it for me, it was like this moment of, uh, uh, you know, you can go with your own discernment and be like, okay, this is bogus, right? But then when you see people involved in it, mm-hmm. that that were like, I knew the moment I stepped. Like, because Hillsong's got a college in Australia that you can go oh, to, like, yeah. like a seminary or something. And like, they had people that went and they, they they were like, the moment I got there, I realized I shouldn't have been, I shouldn't be here. Absolutely. And it was like, it's just so to hear other people say that, it's like, yep. Yeah. I guess there's a sense of patting yourself on the back <laughs> for being in tune, but you know, it's like, yeah. But again, it's funny. 
you got people like the dude I was talking about, you know, a while back, um, the guy in Alabama, uh, with the black trench coat and the Billy Bob, I mean, yeah. uh, not Billy Bob here, but you know what I'm talking about. I was telling you about him. Right. That dude's worth $43 million. That's his net worth, $43 million. So the fact that he has made $43 million off of spreading false teachings about scripture is bothersome because it means that there's people who are believing what he's saying, giving him his money, giving him their money. Mm -hmm. And typically it's people who can't afford to go to a local wrestling match at (laughs) the National Guard Armory. That's who is giving money to these people. So it's really I also love in two separate conversations you have talked about the National Guard Armory. <laughs> I love that. Not, not a sponsor, but we will certainly I take mean, them. <laughs> you know what? Bring them on, man. Bring them on. But yeah, so that's uh and that's what's troublesome about it because you can't people are desperate. People are desperate to hear something. It's almost like when they talk about the mystery, they still perpetuate the mystery of God, right? The quote, quote, mystery of God. Well, Jesus is that mystery. That's the mystery. Jesus coming, doing what he did, dying, coming back. That's the mystery. Mystery's done. Jesus says it's finished. But that's not enough for some people. And those people like the charlatans we've talked about, have been talking about, they perpetuate that to say, no, no, there's still a mystery out there. The mystery is still here. This is the mystery of God. And they're telling me in my ear, God is telling me to tell you this. I can't tell you everything yet because that's also a mystery. But stay tuned and give us your money for more mystery. And you're like, wait a minute. No. If okay, you know, uh, honey, grab the debit card. Absolutely. <laughs> grab, the, grab the debit card. Oh, I want to know the mystery. It is. It is. It's it's curiosity. It's It's people like this. Um, banking on people being ignorant to what scripture says, you know, they, they want to bank that those people don't really know what the scripture says, that they aren't really reading the word. I mean, you see most churches don't even open. I say churches again, I used it wrong. These places, right. I know. Well, it's just in our common knowledge to say that kind of stuff. It's like, it's ingrained into us to say it that way, but you've got these, these places that, um, I don't know what I was going to say now. Oh, well. My my dad fell into that before he died. He uh, started giving, and he was never that way. He was as skeptical as I am about things and, you know, rebellious and about you were a lot. Shocked, and you were shocked when he started writing checks. <sighs> to, to the 700 Club. And I was like, what are you doing, man? Like, he told me he planted, and this is nothing against my dad. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to take it. He's not here to defend himself. But it was just a situation where, you know, he said that uh, he planted some trees in Israel. And I said, when did you go to Israel? I didn't know he went to Israel. He's like, no, no, no. I I sent the money in and they planted them for me. I was like, who who did you send money to to plant trees in Israel? Oh, the 700 Club. And I said, what? What? Why? What are you doing, man? I said, you planted a steak in Pat Robertson's stomach is, is what you did. By sending him your money you don't even have. So it's people get desperate, man. And I think people really capitalize uh, on the on fears of people, on desperation of people, on ignorance of people. And, um, you know, well, the moment the change for me, uh, even my pops, is we were sitting at our church that I grew up in. And they were like, uh, you know, the the offering plates had come around or whatever. And then somebody right. stood up there and they were like, you know, God is good. Da, 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 da. And then they then they uh, I'll try to paraphrase this and get to it. But they were like, you know, we're really grateful for the pastor. I won't mention his name. He's deceased now, but we're really grateful for him and his wife. And, and we just. We, we should all, we want to send them on a trip to Hawaii and for, you know, for all they've done <laughs> for the community and the, in the church and all this. And, 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 you know, so we're going to send another, another, uh, offering plate around. And I, and that's me. My dad looked at me and I could see on his face, he, his wheels were turning <laughs> and I was sitting there kind of like, uh, huh? Bruce. 
and Bruce, and Bruce was like, and and he said that was the moment that he was like, I'm done here. Yeah. Um, because it, you know, and then they made this band Pete and they actually went, the pastor went to Hawaii on your for two weeks. Yeah. For two weeks on the, because we were so grateful for all he did for the church and the, whatever. And it was like, uh, and, and I, I feel like that's where I started to really like see through. Well, and if you go, straight to, if you go to scripture, even Jesus go straight to what Jesus said. He said, uh, the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve mm-hmm. Paul. Paul considered himself. He was like the most books in the new Testament are written by Paul, or at least, you know, from Paul, uh, he considered him the least of the apostles. He was the adopted apostle and he considered himself the least. And the only vacation those guys got, the original the apostles were to be martyred, to be skinned alive, to be, you know, crucified. Upside that's the, down. That's the vacation they got. So Yeah, it's definitely not a good uh commercial for <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's not, man. Sorry, guy, I'll pass. <laughs> I'll pass. I'll pass. I mean, he didn't get them. He didn't get vacations, uh, you know, trying to escape people sitting on the mountainside. He's like, I got to get away for a minute because. Um, but yeah, I go oh, back I to Hill. Get, I could get really hairy in this conversation. <laughs> well, I mean, anyway, <laughs> you know, Hillsong, back to Hillsong. I mean, it is one big vacation. It's about making you feel good. And. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not what it's about. It's not ma- about making you feel good or secure or safe or, you know, um, you know, g- making you rich. I there was a it's funny. I was looking up a something I saw today and um, I uh, it was a verse it was led to this verse in Proverbs. And it says uh, two things. And remember, Proverbs written by Solomon uh, you know, the wisest person to ever live. I mean, he had so much wealth. He was the king over the all kings in the Old Testament. And he says this, two things I ask you, Lord, do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty, poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, it was the Lord, or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. And I'm like, how often do you see these preachers getting up saying, don't give me too much. Just give me enough to survive this day. We we don't do that. And that was like, again, Solomon wrote that and he's the richest person at that time. Um, so I don't know. You don't, you don't see these guys standing up like Hillsong and stuff. Hillsong is saying, send us your thousand dollar seed and God will make it come back to you a hundredfold, and you'll be a millionaire. And they're all wearing Gucci slippers. Oh man. <laughs> There's a way they go, they go into that. Yeah. They go into that, man. The, oh, do the they? Pre- yeah. Uh, one of the guys he started an Instagram called uh, Preacher Sneakers. Yeah, and he, he <laughs> talks. He's on. He's in the documentary. Oh, okay, and, that's cool. Uh, yeah, it's it's wild. Um, how yeah. about uh, how about uh, the chances of Tom Brady going to the Dolphins in twenty twenty three? Is that is that see, something? See what I did there? Is that a thing? Is that a thing? <laughs> is that a thing? <laughs> I keep seeing it on my Google news feeds. So he's gonna play at Tampa Bay and then. There's deals to get him at the Dolphins in Miami. Oh my gosh! Can you imagine? Yeah, I don't care. The anymore. Miami Dolphins in the world. I just, the world I, just series. The, I just want to. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> the Miami Dolphins at the Masters, man. <laughs> Can you believe? That'd be crazy, man. The Dolphins. That would be. That'd be interesting. No, I I did that just because. Ugh. No, I know. We need a we need a, a, a separate uh, hump day conversations for. We need a wine cracker. For a wine for cracker, good grief! We'll call it uh, water into wine. Yeah, wa- water into wine crackers. 
Oh my gosh. Cleanse the palate, you know, you got to eat a one <laughs> <laughs> Cleanse the palate and then the Tom, spirit. <laughs> Tom Brady is our wine cracker. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, that could be taken wrong. Dang. Which part? How about wine cookie? Wine biscuit. He could be our wine biscuit. He's our wine biscuit. <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hi there. We just want to say thanks for listening to Hump Day Conversations with Jeff and Linz. We really appreciate it. We want to give a super good shout out to Jacob Boyd with Post Retro for his invaluable guidance as we put this thing together. Go listen to his super swell podcast, Talking Indies in My Undies, wherever you find podcasts. We also want to give an extra super duper shout out to our founding Patreon patron, John Thomas Oaks. JT is part of the We Feel You tier, and by being so, we'll get this shout out as well as written mentions in our video versions and social medias, and we will read and respond to his letter email once per month in a special extra episode. You can find JT every Sunday night at 7 p.m. on John Branion's Starving Comics Quarantine Show on YouTube. We also want to welcome Katie Burheim from South Dakota to the Hump Club. Katie is part of the We Hear You tier. And by being so, she's going to get this shout out plus written shout outs on all our social media outlets. If you'd like to join JT and Katie in the Hump Club, go visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com forward slash hump DC. That's H-U-M-P-D-C. Don't forget the new episode of our little show drops every Wednesday at 12, 12 a.m. on Spotify and iTunes and at 12, 12 p.m. on YouTube with one or both of us in the live chat as it premieres on the Daydreamer Pictures channel. We hope we can help you get over hump day with some laughs and whatnot. Be sure to slap the like buttons wherever and whenever possible. Share and subscribe.